Hi, I'm Karen Beistad. I go by KB, and welcome to our podcast uh, with Lucy Clarkson. Lucy, thank you so much for coming up with this amazing idea. Well, I mean, I was drawn to you. I mean, we've not known each other that long. And when I saw you in Brickell City Centre, I was like, who is that? I mean, I can't remember what colour wig you had on. Maybe it was a red one. Mm. But I saw Snow Butter and I was with Moo Moo. I was like, I have, I was, it was just like a magnet. I was just like drawn to you. And then as we've got to know each other, we're like badass women. We have a lot in common. And I thought let's do an empowering kind of podcast for women. And uh, here we are. And just share, just fucking shoot the shit. Yeah, right? shoot just, the shit. I keep it real. Keep it real about things that we go through, you know, in our work, in our yeah. dating lives. Um, oh God, don't talk about dating. I, I mean, know. I've been married three times. I've been engaged, what, eight times. And to be honest, I didn't even like to have sex until I turned 40. You know, I don't I know didn't why. Either. I didn't either. And I think a lot of women don't realize that. Yeah, like, I was like, I'd rather have a cup of tea. I mean, literally, I, I mean, I would talk to my friends. They'd be like, that's so weird. But I just think maybe just things that I've gone through in my life that's just kind of turned me against men. But now I'm like very much into the dating scene. I'm happy and um but you've been married haven't you yes I was married once as well and I've been with some of the most beautiful men in the world I'm sure I start, and you photographed them yes I started out my career photographing male models um so I started out doing this and of course that's when I ended up photographing Andy World but I you know I turned the table somehow because I came up with this idea to photograph um male models and yeah. tell their stories and of course you know i had to shoot them at sunset and they were all in incredible shape at the time they were all um very preppy and they some of them were uh athletes that's amazing and um yeah and some of them went after me and so i had sex with some really beautiful guys it's crazy that you said that because i know that you also photographed many a-list celebrities before they were known and one of them being, I mean, you wrote a book about them, so. That's right. I wrote three books. One yeah. was called The New Breed. One was called Before They Were Famous. And the last one was They Dared to Dream. That's crazy. And um, in, it included Brad Pitt, Johnny Depp, Keanu wow. Reeves, um, Robert Downey Jr. So tell me, when you when you interviewed um, Keanu Reeves, what kind of house did he have? I mean, you know I'm in real estate, so I'm just intrigued to know, before he was famous, what house did he have? You know, honestly, Keanu Reeves was living in the flats of L.A. <laughs> I walked into this kitchen. His shirt was ripped. He was, you know, kind of dirty. He was, like, very sexy, but white shirt. He was drinking wine and Amazing. I think it was a one bedroom apartment. Amazing. Um, we ended up doing the shoot out in the empty parking lot outside. It's funny because he actually is dating a, a, an older woman and he just got criticized recently for dating an older lady. I don't know if you saw it. I don't think he's dating an older lady. I think he's dating a lady his age. Really? Yes. She just has it's white probably hair. Because she, yeah, and I think it's because she's not the typical person that you would probably think that you would see Keanu Reeves with. I don't know. I mean, she's just not like a typical like A-list kind of person. But Keanu Reeves has never been that. Yeah. Keanu Reeves has always been uh, a very out-of-the-box different person. Yeah. So I just think, you know, he's very authentic and she's actually an artist. That's like you. Um, yeah. It should be That's me. Amazing. It should be me. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, you know, it's so funny because I, at the time, I photographed Brad Pitt, uh, Keanu, Johnny Depp, uh, and but everyone, you know, said, "Oh, Brad," and I mean, Brad is the most beautiful person. Yeah, I've genuine, heard amazing authentic. things about him. You should have photographed me when I was doing Lara Croft. I know, but you were in the UK and I, know. I was in Los Angeles. I know. We were just saying earlier, when when I got um, discovered as Lara Croft, I was actually living in South Africa at the time in 99, just as you were uh, f photographing all these gorgeous men. In Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. in Los Angeles. Mm. Yeah. It's really, really interesting. 
So uh, how did that come about? How did you get that? And what was that experience? And what exactly? So you were the video. Yeah, it was basically way before the movie came out. I was uh, modeling. I was in South Africa. Someone saw me on a billboard. Ironically, my dad used to always say that I looked like Laura Croft. I couldn't see the resemblance. And um, I flew back to England again. I was auditioning with major, major big people like that were already accomplished. And I was this 17 year old girl from this small town in England. And I got the job and I was literally catapulted overnight to stardom. It was crazy. And it's so weird from being Laura Croft, a model coming to America and now being a luxury real estate agent and being in the real estate world is just mind blowing. Um, because I just never thought that I would be transitioning into a realtor. And, you know, it brings me to, I mean, Miami, everybody's a realtor. You mm. can give your card. I mean, mm. there's so much competition here. Mm. And, you know, granted, I, I'm very good at what I do, but on the other hand, sometimes people just pretend to buy a house so they can date me. And I'm like, no. Well, I guess that's, you know, that's what happens when you're incredibly beautiful and you're an Amazonian well, thank woman. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, but it's great because, you know, I just moved to Miami as well a year ago, so we can yeah. probably thank collaborate. Thank goodness, we would never have met. That's right. Um, I just curated uh, a new pizza place. It's called Artisteria. It is a $2 million new construction in Brickell. How's and the pizza? The pizza is amazing. Um, the chef is a 17 year old from Germany who's yeah. been making pizza since he was 12. And uh, the guys who own it had the idea of um, mixing pizza and art. And they asked me to curate um, I guess icons and yeah, so I so different I, yeah. I, I what did you that. think of my curation I mean I was there at the opening I'm I didn't get a slice of pizza I was so hot that night I don't know what happened I, I you saw my outfit I mean but what I was about dressed, the art my I love. mean the art we're just talking about my outfit right now Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I was like dressed for the Oscars um it was incredible incredible mm. and you know just it's so different being there and you're so talented Mm, I mean, you. you're not only beautiful and wonderful and wise and um, and someone that I idolize, um, but yeah, it's 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 a wonderful concept. I, yeah, I love it very and we much. rocked it like that night. We did, we did we rock it. it. And I know you said your boots was killing your boots that you were wearing were killing you. And but today they're not. And that's so weird. I know. But it's so strange because you know a lot of the times in in. Um, in real estate, the staging alone, mm. I mean, the staging to, to sell these homes mm. are absolutely stunning. And then you go and show someone around and the things that I've seen when I've shown clients around houses, you wouldn't believe. Like, really? Oh like my what? Goodness. Just people still being in bed. And then you're literally just having to walk past them and pretend they're not there. I mean, you wouldn't believe or just, you know, not answering the door because they've been partying the night before or just some really interesting things that you see around the house. So I um, recently got um, approached by a real estate agent who was killing it in San Francisco and he did millions and millions of dollars and he is doing a mailing and he asked if he could take some of my art, um, yeah. my Lost Warhol art wow. and put it on postcards because you know his you idea- You have to stand out now. You have to be totally different. Right. His idea is rather than showing a house, he would show art and that would get someone's attention. So, yeah. um, but I really look forward to helping you stage art. Thank once, you. And we can work together on that. That would be, that would be really good. But I think just like the market in general now, it's just so tough. There's no inventory, you know, unless you're a cash buyer, it's just a tough market. It really is. But I mean, I, I, what I know about real estate is more the aesthetics, you know, and yeah. putting art in it and working with uh, clients, you know, to basically, because really you can have a house that has shitty art in it and <laughs> it can feel dead it's true. and lifeless. And then you bring in someone like me and I work with you and we put art in and it just breathes life into the house and it becomes this beautiful space that's very um catered to to who you are and what your taste is yeah so that's 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 really really gratifying for me uh, i mean it's it's weird because i'm also an artist and myself yeah um but what's your like dream home if you had to have your dream home what would it be i know what mine would be 
Um, probably modern. I love um, what is it called? Cement. Um, yeah. White walls. Um, very spacious. Definitely, you know, either balcony or yard. Um, yeah. Close to the water. Yeah. Mine would be a ranch in the middle of nowhere. And so I don't have to see anyone ever again. I'm oh, just I'm not like that <laughs> at all. I'm a city girl. No. I'm a city woman. And I, I love, I just need to be close. And that's why living in Brickell suits me. Um, yeah. But of course, I think, you know, for me, I would also like to have a castle in the south of France. And I mean, I love traveling. So, so. you live in, you live in Brickell. Do you find that you get hit on a lot with like, because you stand out, obviously. I mean, do people ask you? Like why you wear these wigs? Because I've seen you with your natural hair and you look absolutely stunning. But I guess it's just you. I mean, do pe do people actually come up and ask, or you they know, just? I think a lot of people are intimidated. But yeah. I've had men say to me, "Wow, I, we see you, and you're you're amazing." Oh, I love that. Um, so yeah. I have had that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't think that there are many people in Brickle going around and. You in, know, in, green, in wigs. green yeah. wigs um, like I do. But, you know, what is what I do get is I get a lot of smiles. Yeah. I get a lot of love. You put love. a smile on people's face. I put a smile on people's yeah. face. Just That's by... why I dye Mumu's ears pink because you wouldn't believe. And, and it's organic. It's it's safe. Just nice. for everyone I out there. I love Mumu. Um, Mumu. But, you know, I, I just find in general, you know, she brings a lot of, like, men up to me just so they can talk to me. But I was... I was just saying the other day, I mean, dating right now is just such a pain in the ass. I, I would love to write a book and just call it blocked because you wouldn't believe how many men I've like been back and forth with text messages and then it's like blocked. And I'd love to do a chapter in each book and at the end of it blocked because it's just, there's no chivalry anymore. Everything's sending a, a D-I-C-K pic or they- A dick pic? Yeah, everyone's like just, <laughs> I, I didn't want to say, everyone's just like easy to jump in bed. All, well, that's all that men think about is sex. I, it's think, just... I think it's because of the apps. And, you know, it's funny because I was married for 17 years and um, I got divorced in 2014. And... Oh, my God. Were we talking about real estate? No, but I was looking at you because when you were saying I got divorced in 2014, you looked so traumatized. Yes, I got divorced in 2014. <laughs> Obviously it, didn't go well. Well, it was difficult just We because... can go back to real estate. Don't worry. No, I, I mean, I will just say, you know, I, I started... What happened was is I found my negatives, my Andy Warhol negatives, and I embarked in my art, my artist journey. Um, and I had... Um, at that time, I was doing a lot of yoga, and I, I worked with a spiritual um, guy called Darje. He was uh, from Tibet. Wow. And my friend said, you know, you really need a reset. You yeah. need to do this energy work. So I went in, and I, I, I met this guy, and he said, you have so much to give but you are in la la land we need to reset you reset you yeah. we need to reawaken you revitalize you yeah. you know and i was like okay did it work know? it did work it did it do you did. have his number <laughs> i wouldn't mind it <laughs> i mean I'm, I'm telling you it was very very incredible work it was very physical it was uh painful yeah because he would put me in these yoga positions and that were painful and I would have to stay there until I released and the whole exercise was releasing control and then once you released you had uh you were able to the pain would go away would go away um but yeah. he did release a lot of energy he did reset me and I was full on on my career yeah and my ex-husband was not into that yeah uh, I had helped you know we had done some creative stuff together and I had helped build his company. And at that point, I really just wanted to just focus on myself yeah. and my career. Well, that's the thing. As women, and, and you and I are very, very similar, when we're in relationships, we, f we tend to forget about ourselves and just kind of do... Well, I think women, that's what women, that's do. What women and do. That's in what, and, But that's what men, that's what men ask of women. Yeah. And, Isn't that sad? you know... I really became a zombie and I'm just so grateful that I saved myself. Yeah. Um, and it did result in the separation, but then 
Well, that's the, that's, the, that's the thing as well. And, you know, just in, in general and going back to like real estate and things and, you know, me being a model all my life and not really being in like a professional kind of, you know, surroundings, dealing with men in real estate, it's just, it's not, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's not even, I feel like men have the upper hand, even when it comes to selling houses. And... Well, look, you know, most, in most professions, you know, men have the upper hand. Yeah. I mean, in the art world, only 20% of women make up, you know, art sales, which is just absolutely crazy. Isn't that crazy? My broker said to me the other day, he said, next time you show someone around the house, if it's a couple, you make sure you dress down and you wear glasses and you wear flats. And I thought, why? What have I got to do with selling the house? I but mean, I, I, I see it, I, I get it, but it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't have to be like that. And it's annoying. And that's where queendom comes in because why should I have to dress down to sell a house? I mean, I've never done that. I never looked back, okay? Once I made the decision to leave, you know, to, I, actually I didn't leave my husband. He just begged me to stop. And I said, absolutely not. Yeah. And I said, I and I. by the way, I was invited to Monaco. The Prince of Monaco bought my first photograph. Wow. I was invited to Milan Fashion Week. Uh, Sharon Stone auctioned off at Amphar, one of my photographs Amazing. for 50,000 euros. And each time I would invite him and he would say, no, I don't want to be Mr. Bystead. So I'm like, oh, fine. Yeah. You know, bye. Um, and then I just embarked on this incredible art career and also my sexual life opened. <laughs> I went through the, my 50 shades of gray and. Um, and so you found I, yourself. Yeah, I found myself and I found myself also at 40. Yeah. So I wonder the lucky number 40, because I literally am a totally mm. different person in the bedroom. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't want to go into. Well, I, I mean, I can, but maybe that's no, for me a, too. our next podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. We, that can be a whole that, podcast. That'll be a whole podcast. But uh, yeah, me too, because, I, you know, I became self-assured. I started to ask for what I wanted. I, yeah. um, you know, yeah, so I'm, I'm much better in bed now than I was at 20 or 30, for sure. So interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. I guess 40 is the new 20. That's right. And that's, and the thing is, that's why, that's why they say, you know, young men, older women. I mean, it's, yeah. and that is true. They, you know, they always say older men, younger women, but I think that's turned around. And I think sexually they're more compatible, you know? Yeah. I've found especially in my age now, I attract a lot of young guys. Mm -hmm. They're just not interested in the younger girls. They just said, you know what you want, you know what to do. And they, and it's a, and a better conversation, mm -hmm. I guess, especially now with like social media and you, you go out to dinner and you just see it, not just young people, but there's no talking, there's no conversation. It's literally taking photographs and then they bring all this, the flashlights out and it's all, it's a whole, you know, photo shoot while they sat at dinner, which I know, I know it's really, thank God I was never in that world. I mean, I just feel that it's up to us, you know, to be role models to, but, but absolutely but be real. Yes. I mean, you don't have to have yes. the flashing lights, just show, just show being real. And that's it. And that's why I wanted to do this podcast with Queendom, because I said, you know, if we can be transparent, if we can be real, if we can tell our stories, whether they're embarrassing, even for us to tell, then, you know, people appreciate it. Women appreciate it because we're all curious. No, absolutely. Absolutely, Lucy. But I do do want to encourage you to just going back to, you know, part of queendom is for women to own themselves. So even, you know, in your real estate business, walk in and wear whatever you want. Yeah. Go in there, be the queen and yeah. kill it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You know, that's, I, I would really like to encourage you to do that. Stay true and to myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because eventually, you know, people will be like, oh, I know Lucy. She's the six foot model. Oh no, she's a real estate agent and she's probably six foot four with heels on and just know me as me. Just not being, you know, having to dress down just to please other people and no, to sell a house. No, you you, yeah. you should be the Amazonian beautiful. You're a beautiful woman <laughs> and you. you get to dress how you like. Yeah. You know, because whatever profession you go into, you can bring your own beautiful personality into it and yeah. your own personal power. Yeah. 
and you can be as long as you're authentic and you're also you're beautiful but you're also quite funny I think I'm very um, funny. What do you mean quite funny? I think I'm very <laughs> funny. And the, and the thing is with me, I, I get on with my clients really well and I go above and beyond for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, with real estate, you know, you're someone's therapist 24 hours. You're the, you're the best friend. I mean, they can call you, you know, when you're a real estate agent, your phone is never switched off. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like it's that nice connection because it's people that are making, I have a client right now that's showing him homes in Naples and it's gonna be his biggest purchase he's ever made in 65 mm. years. Wow. And he's calling me up every single day, asking me questions, going over the same thing, but it's a big purchase. Right. I mean, you're not talking about buying, you know, a handbag or, you know, a watch. We're talking about something that's life changing. So, you know, I'm I'm all eyes and ears for him. And um, but yeah, it's it's definitely a different world that I didn't never thought that I would be in. No, no, but I, I love understand. it. It's fabulous, and I love homes. And you know, throughout my three marriages, I mean, I was going to buy Shakira's house at one point when I was nine months pregnant, and she backed out at the last minute. She didn't want to sell it. Mm. Um, I've lived in beautiful homes, so I can really relate to the luxury market mm. and I know all the areas in Miami and uh, yeah, so. Well, I think that as we continue on, I mean, we, we can also call it the adventures of KB and Lucy because I just got here from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm also um, getting to know clients who are buying art. Yeah and curating different events. Um, I will be going to Mexico City, Ooh. which I'm really excited to do a show. I heard Mexico City is re like really out there, like fabulous. Yeah, I'm so yeah. excited. I'm so excited. It's, it's uh, you know, a place of culture and- We can talk about it when you're back. I'm yeah, really, absolutely. I'm really interested to, and that's the, the whole art scene? It's, a, yes, exactly. It's an art scene. Um, yeah. And you know, Art Basel is coming up. I know, um, I know it is. So, I have a know, lot of clients coming in from out of states that I have to show homes to, so it's perfect. Well, last year I did something very interesting. I curated art for chimpanzees. So I worked hmm. with Dan Matthews, who was um, part of PETA. Yeah, and, and I've worked for Peter as well. You worked with Peter I was actually too. I was yeah. actually painted naked and walked through London um against Betha. oh so, i love it yeah. so that's so he's the one who came up with the pamela anderson um yeah. campaign uh -huh. where she went naked and it was all i'd i'd rather be naked than wear fur yeah right? i can remember that was a big deal yeah that's amazing that you did that yeah. i know i you know i went naked in gold as well um i became the gold queen yeah i think i think we should just change this whole podcast to naked Going Obviously, naked. we both like being naked. naked and be painted. <laughs> we do. <laughs> we do. So um, So anyway, Lucy, we, you know, we're just starting. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I just, it's just so nice to talk and be ourselves. And I'm excited for the next podcast. We've got some interesting things to talk about, more openness and um, yeah. Yeah, so. and you know, you and I have a lot to share. Uh, we can share about dating. We can also yeah. share about our beauty secrets. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about how, how how good we look for our age. Yeah, and I mean, there's a reason for that. And you we'll know, talk. we have certain habits yeah. that we do, and we can talk more about art and real estate and our. And our, next time, I'll bring the bottle of tequila because I know you wanted to do a shot before. I you really came on. wanted a shot of tequila with lemon. Okay? <laughs> I'll promise I'll bring it. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> Anyway, um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we really enjoyed having you. I hope you enjoyed meeting us and um, our... Listening to our craziness. Yes. 